So it's finally time to review one of the three products that I recently put in my budget build, and that is the Gigabyte B85M DS3H. Welcome back to Tech Air City. This is Branizzi coming back to you guys today with a review of the B85M DS3H from Gigabyte. Now this motherboard is recently become very popular and the main reason for that is because Gigabyte have released a UEFI BIOS which allows you to overclock overclockable uh, Haswell CPUs. Uh, however, it, although this board will allow you to overclock a 4670K, a 4690K, 4770K, and a 4790K, it mainly comes with the, um, I mean, the main, you extract the most value for money out of this motherboard when you couple it with a 3258. And there's a few reasons for this. Uh, the first reason is that the motherboard itself actually has a a voltage limit of 1.2 volts and the second reason for this is that at that 1.2 voltage limit you can safely use the stock heatsink with a 3258 so it's kind of like you're getting the best of both really extracting the best value for money out of both products when you couple them together so anyway let's look at the motherboard itself today we're just going to be looking at the motherboard itself I'll be talking about uh, the experience that I had with this motherboard, I'll be talking about the features of this motherboard and I'll giving, giving this thing an overall huge <laughs> high recommendation. So let's get on with it. So when we look at the motherboard itself, it comes packaged just like any other motherboard. I mean, it comes packaged pretty well. It could take a beating and shipping. It comes with two SATA 3 cables. It also comes with an input-output shield. And it also comes with a user manual, which is actually very easy to read. Now, picking up this motherboard for the first time, I was impressed. It's been a while since I've had a Gigabyte motherboard come through here. And honestly, when I picked it up, it was just like, yeah, you're getting that solid Gigabyte feel. Even with a budget motherboard like the B85M, it, the motherboard still feels solid, all the SATA connections feel solid, the RAM slot, everything just feels solid and well built with the Gigabyte motherboard. Also the black on the front and the rear looks really good as well, it's a nice jet black uh, if you guys are thinking about, it's not a brown if you guys are worried about that. Uh, also let's look at the motherboard itself and what it features. Looking at the main part itself, it looks like it features a 4 plus 2 phase power design. Uh, it actually doesn't say on the spec, si uh, spec sheet, but that's what I believe it is. Uh, this is ample fine if you're going to overclock a 3258. Now you also, with this motherboard, you get a two 4 pin CPU connectors, so it will, it will give a more solid power delivery than a H81M motherboard otherwise would. So keep that in mind. This is the main reason why I'm recommending this motherboard over H81Ms. I just believe it's a more solid motherboard. It's a more stable motherboard for the job. Now also with this motherboard as well, you're getting four uh, RAM slots as well, which supports up to 32 gigabytes of RAM. So it does give you a bit of upgradability if you want to put in, say in the future, if you want to put 16 gigabytes of RAM in, and put in a 4770K or something like that, this motherboard will allow you to do that, which is actually really impressive. Now, another impressive feature about this motherboard is it features dual BIOS as well. So you're getting a dual BIOS on a 55, well, I paid $55 for it, a $55 motherboard, which is really damn impressive in my opinion. Like, I was surprised because if you guys are doing, a, if you're flashing the BIOS and, and some freak accident happens, like the power cuts out while you're flashing a BIOS, if you only have a single BIOS on board, essentially your motherboard will be bricked. If you have the dual BIOS, you can recover the BIOS that you had before and you can try and flash it again. So I do like the dual BIOS implementation, especially on a $55 motherboard. Now looking at the heatsink itself, it's got a heatsink on the south bridge. It doesn't feature a heatsink on the north bridge, which is unfortunate. But again, due to the price, I really can't say that is a negative because I can't expect them to put so many things in on a budget motherboard. Uh, looking at the features of the motherboard itself, it has uh, support for four front panel USB connections, has support also for two front panel USB 3 connections. It also has front audio out panel there or your power pins as well, your normal things. Now looking at the rear of the motherboard, you get four USB 2 ports, you also get 
two USB 3 ports on the rear, a PS2 port, HDMI out, uh, a Realtek NIC, which is probably the only thing I would critique about this motherboard. However, again, with the price in mind, I can't expect them to put a more expensive NIC on board. Uh, you also get the Realtek ALC887 onboard audio, which is very decent. I mean, considering it comes with a $55 motherboard, very decent for the money. I mean, I tested this with my headphones. Uh, it sounds pretty decent. I mean, I tested the microphone as well. It's also got support for noise removal. So if you're playing video games, you can just hit that noise removal and you're good to go. So, okay, so we've done the actual review now of the product. Let's talk about the BIOS and look what you get. So as soon as you get this motherboard, you essentially can couple it and it will work with a 3258, regardless of how old the BIOS is. I'm not sure about the 4690K and the 4790K. So if you're gonna get that CPU and couple it with this motherboard, which I, I mean, it's not that high of a recommendation due to the 1.2 volt limit. Uh, but if you're gonna do that, then please research it. You may need the BIOS update before you put those CPUs in with this motherboard. However, this, mother, this CPU will work straight out of the box with any BIOS implementation on this motherboard. However, as soon as you get this motherboard, you will want to update the BIOS. And that is because that'll allow you to overclock the 3258. So once you do that, uh, essentially you can pretty much put the voltage up to 1.2 volts, which is how I'd recommend overclocking this thing, put it up to 1.2 volts, and then see how high of a clock speed you can get with your CPU, uh, the 3258. There's also some other things you may want to do. I raised the T, uh, TDP limit as well, the max wattage limit, just so it didn't become an object in overclocking this thing. Now you're probably wondering why is there a 1.2 volt limit on the B85? And I believe that's just simply to protect the motherboard and also to protect you, the users, from frying the motherboard. Because if you fry a motherboard, you have the potential to damage not just the motherboard, but pretty much every component in your system. So keep that in mind. I do agree with the 1.2 volt limit. I do believe it's a good safety measure put in place, uh, especially when we consider that these motherboards were never intended for overclocking. So I like the fact that this motherboard does overclock this CPU and it does overclock it very well. I mean, I ran a 24 hour a stress test on Unigine Valley and also ran a two hour stress test on Prime 95 in the dead heat of summer. We're talking 30 degrees plus. This motherboard, this CPU, they held up absolutely fine. So I was pretty much blown away by how good um, the value for money was when you look at this motherboard. It handled this Pentium absolutely fine. Now, another thing, you guys are probably wondering, well, why did you just use the heat sink? So when I featured, when I talked about my build in my vlog, a few um, a few days ago, I was talking about me just using the stock heatsink fan with a 3258. And again, the big reason for that is the 1.2 volt limit on this motherboard. Uh, I will, I probably will be putting it in my Z87 motherboard and seeing how high it goes. If you guys want to see it, I might even fry it, who knows, make a good video on that. But uh, in the meantime, the 1.2 volt limit means that essentially this CPU will be fine with the stock heatsink fan because if it can't go over 1.2 volt and it's hitting 90 degrees max in the dead heat of summer on Prime 95, then there is no need to get an aftermarket heatsink fan with this CPU. That's just my opinion. Uh, if it had a 1.3 volt limit, then yeah, you might be able to get it to 4.6 gig, 4.5 gig, and then you might need that aftermarket CPU cooler. But with the 1.2 volt limit on this motherboard, 4.2 gigs and the stock heatsink, it's such good synergy, such good value for money. You can save that extra money, put it towards a GDX 760 or a 750 Ti or a uh, R9 270, whichever you want to go with, and it will make for one hell of a gaming machine. Now, these two, in closing, I'm going to talk about these two together. They are really really good they um, I mean honestly this is like one of the best value for money motherboards I have seen in a long time it just handles the Pentium 3258 so well handles the motherboard I mean it handles the GDX 760 so well doesn't get hot uh, just absolutely phenomenal experience with this motherboard I can highly recommend it for $55 if you are going thinking about getting with the 3258 I'm gonna be bringing out an overclocking 3258 guide for this motherboard as well so stay tuned for that. Okay, so before I go and edit this video for you guys, I will add one more point, and that is that the B85M actually can enter the C1E enhanced hold state on the CPU. Uh, even though it does say that the voltage is fixed at 1.2 volts when I overclocked it, I actually checked with a kilowatt meter, 
and the wattage or the power consumption was running exactly pretty much identically the same as when it was on the auto settings and the voltage was scaling down to 0.7 volts. So I don't know about other brands like the ASUS H81M or the MSI, but the Gigabyte uh, B85, this motherboard does indeed allow the CPU to enter the C1E enhanced halt state when you overclock it, even though it says that the CPU is still running at 1.2 volts. I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I will catch you guys very soon with the Pentium 3258 review. If you have any questions, please leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. And yeah, I can't wait to give you guys the video on the 3258. Anyway, peace out for now. This is Burrani. Bye.